my homily today, I decided, first of all, to go back to the beginning of Advent. When we enter into the season of Advent, we are often reminded of what to do to prepare ourselves spiritually in order to have a full celebration of the birth of our Savior. That preparation involves a lot of things. Spiritually, we are all, all invited to read the scriptures, to attend masses, to listen to the word of God. And if you have any reflection, any book that you can lay your hands on, that can inspire you to learn more about the birth of our Savior. Every Catholic, every Christian is always encouraged to make use of that opportunity. But sometimes we somehow derail from that area and focus on other things, focus more on other material things without preparing ourselves spiritually and when we do that, we lose the content, the core of this very solemnity that we're celebrating. So the church has prepared many things for us, has laid down many things for us to get well prepared. So that when we celebrate, we can understand better why Jesus came. Now, the focus of Christmas is not so much about other things. The focus is on who? The church of God here. Where is the focus of, of this very preparation? The birth of our Savior. And that is what we have heard from this gospel today, that people were disturbed, we, they were worried. And the angel came to them and said, do not be afraid. For a savior is born, our savior, Jesus Christ, who came from the heritage or from descent of David, has been born to us. Why are people told not to be afraid just because there is a savior born? When the people tell you, do not be afraid, for you have someone who can help you. Do not be worried so much because a savior is born, that God is among us. And I would like to invite everyone to please repeat this with me. Do not be worried, for God is among us. Do not be afraid, for God is among us. This is not just coming from me. If you listen very well from the gospel, it's very clear that when people were disturbed and worried about their life, what is going on in their life, what was terrifying them, this angel came to them and said, do not be afraid, for a savior, Emmanuel, is among us. Are there anything that worry you do you feel overwhelmed by troubles, by many problems in this very world? Can you listen to the voice of this very angel that heard about Jesus Christ born, Emmanuel, that was born? And immediately that angel told them and convinced them not to worry, not to be disturbed, for God is among us. Among other things that we can learn from this very celebration, if we ask ourselves, why did Jesus, why did God decide to come in the form of a human being? Why did he just decide to come to be born like us? He had something important that we can learn from his coming into human flesh. Because God, Jesus, God in the form of Jesus Christ is no longer the God that stays in heaven and begins to tell us what to do. 
but it's a God that stays with us, God among his people, directing people on what to do. And not only directing people, he lived it out. He lived the life. Everything you are hearing or you hear us preach or hear in the Bible that we should do, Jesus Christ started doing them in practice. He's the one that practiced what we are being told to do. Remember very clearly that even, even when he was having the Last Supper, he was the one, he taught people how to be charitable, how to be kind to people. He would stand on the pulpit to preach how to love one another, how to care for one another. But after that, after that very teaching, he dined with the people. He was at the table, he left the table and went to the people and started washing their feet. So it's not just God that teaches us on what to do, but a God that practices what he wants us to do. That's why he came. He came that we can learn the life, the how to live a good life, how to forgive one another, how to have courage that even in the midst of all troubles, remember, the story of Jesus Christ that you know, narrates a story of impossibilities, how he came into existence, how he was born, how he was conceived. Every story about him is like, this is not possible to, be, to happen. But it did happen. So everything, even when we think, because when we learn about this, it helps us to understand that even in our life, when we think that things are no longer going to happen, all those good things that you dream of, all those wonderful things that you so much want to happen in your life, and you think that, well, it's not gonna happen any longer. Remember, with God, it is not impossible. I always remind people, including myself, I always remind and say, do never you put period wherever God has only put a comma. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Never if you put a period where God has done what? Put a comma. What's a comma? You guys are English people, so you know what a comma means, right? <laughs> the comma means that you no, know, something yet is still coming. It's not concluded. Yes, I heard someone there. So but often we always summarize and say, well, this is the end of it all. With God, it's not the end. With God, there is hope. With God, those impossibilities, they can still be possible. With us, human beings, it is impossible. But with God, it's not impossible. It happened in the life of Mary. Mary somehow doubted that this will happen. Joseph, the husband, also doubted that this will happen. The, John, the, the father of John the Baptist, Zachariah, also doubted that something like this will happen. But they all came and happened, and they were all amazed. And so, my dear friends, as we celebrate today, the Emmanuel, God among us, let us always remember the message of an angel do not be afraid, for God is among us. That is why he came. He came to heal our wounds. He came to help us in all our struggles. He came to remind us that even when things are not going on well, we should never give up. We should have hope because God makes impossibilities possible. Amen.